Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number four in our Manifest Destiny unit, uh, where we are answering the overall essential question, how did the United States expand from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean? Today, we are going to focus on Texas, and our essential question for this lesson is, how did Texas become part of the United States? Uh, there's a lot of information in this particular lesson, so I'm going to ask you to bear with me. Uh, it is a rather important and significant part of American history, and it is a unique story to tell. So our first left side question will be, why was Texas important? What was the big deal about Texas? Why was there a big brouhaha over Texas and whether or not it should become part of the United States? Let us tell the story. First of all, Texas was well suited to growing cotton. Cotton was very important in the American South. It was the main cash crop southerners grew and slave labor was used to grow and cultivate cotton for those reasons southerners really really had their eyes on texas mexico gained its independence from spain in 1821 up until 1821 mexico was nueva españa uh, mexicans revolted against spanish rule and were given their independence in 1821. Uh, Coahuila y Texas was the northeasternmost state of the new nation of Mexico. Uh, under Spanish rule, uh, some American settlers were allowed to come into Texas, and under Mexican rule, that was continued with some very key understandings. Um, there were very few people in this region, and because of that, Mexico actually wanted um, settlers to come in and populate the area. So Americans were invited to immigrate into Mexico, but they had to agree to a few things. One of the things they had to agree with is they had to become citizens of Mexico. They had to learn Spanish. They had to obey Mexican laws, and they had to join the Catholic Church. So those are all things that the American settlers had to agree to before they were allowed to move into Texas and become settlers. However, a lot of the settlers who came to move in agreed to these things, but did not take them particularly seriously. This became a problem. Why did tensions develop between Mexico and the Texas settlers? Let's find out. Uh, the American settlers never really wanted to become Mexican. They just wanted the land. So they agreed to what they had to agree to, just so Mexico would give them permission to move into that land and not give them a hard time. Uh, Mexico outlawed slavery in 1829, and this angered the settlers because cotton was their main cash crop, and they used slaves to pick that cotton. Slavery was a part of the lifestyle and culture of the settlers who moved into that area. And Mexico, to its credit, banned slavery, which was a good moral choice, well before it was ever banned in the United States. But in this particular case, it did not make those settlers happy. Most of those settlers were from the American South. Uh, Mexico also did not allow much self-government and issued many orders from Mexico City. Uh, the settlers came from America where they were used to having elections and having a lot of local control over their affairs. Mexico did not allow that. And that was the source of quite a bit of tension that developed over the course of time. Uh, there was also a group of people called Tejanos, who were Mexicans who lived in Texas. So they were of Spanish and Mexican descent, but they lived in Texas and were very culturally Texan. Uh, they resented the illegal immigration of many Americans into Mexico. Irony can be pretty ironic sometimes. 
Uh, in this particular case, many Americans were moving there without the specific permission of the Mexican government. The Mexican government obviously needed to approve whoever immigrated into that territory, and there was kind of a mad rush by Americans to move into that territory uh, illegally. The Tejanos did not like that very much. So the settlers really did not want to learn Spanish, and one of the requirements was that all official documents be in Spanish, uh, and the settlers did not particularly like or appreciate that. So we have quite a bit of tension building up, and I think you can probably see where this is heading. So there is something called the Texas Revolution. Finally, the Texans finally uh, revolted against the Mexican government and had a revolution. How did the Texas Revolution begin? Mexico banned immigration from the United States and sent the military in to enforce Mexican law. So eventually the Mexican government had enough. They saw what was coming up on the horizon and they basically took steps to try and get the situation under control. One of those things was banning immigration. The other was sending in the military. General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana became president of Mexico, and this man, let's just say, was a very, very colorful figure in Mexican history. Um, I believe he was once quoted as saying, if I woke up one day and found myself God, I would want to be more. Uh, he was determined to crush the Texans and crush any potential rebellion in Texas. Uh, so he threw their leader, Stephen Austin, um, Austin, Texas, the capital of Texas is named after Stephen Austin, uh, into jail after Austin went down to Mexico City, basically asking Santa Ana for leniency and to allow the settlers to continue to live there without problems. Santa Ana wasn't having any of that. He threw him in jail and wanted to make an example of him. But he was not in jail forever, and he was eventually released. Uh, William Travis was a hothead. This is someone who really, really wanted to fight back against Mexico, have a revolution, and get Texas out of Mexico and out from under the thumb of Santa Ana. He wanted Texas to revolt and become an independent country. That's William Travis down there in the lower right-hand corner. Obviously, this is President Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. In 1835, the revolt began and Santa Ana sent 6,000 Mexican troops into Texas to put down this rebellion. It has begun. So how did the revolution play out? Well, there's a rather famous event you've probably heard of. In February 1836, Santa Ana's troops laid siege to the Alamo in San Antonio and killed 180 Texans. Anybody who survived the siege of the Alamo was ordered executed. So Santa Ana brutally attacked it. I believe it was six days. Uh, then there was a final battle that was 90 minutes long. Uh, William Travis and Stephen Austin were both killed in this battle. Um, and Santa Ana laid siege to it and killed everyone in there, except, I believe, for a couple of women. Um, so this was such a brutal attack and such a slaughter that it fueled the Texans' rage and desire for victory. The rallying cry from that point forward during the revolution became, remember the Alamo. And that's a phrase you've probably heard before. If not, you just heard it now. Remember the Alamo. Sam Houston, hey, there's a city named after him, was a Texas leader. He was a military leader. Uh, he retreated eastward from San Antonio. His desire was to lure Santa Ana and his troops deeper into Texas, making it harder for him to resupply his army from Mexico. That turned out to be a very good strategy. Uh, Santa Ana kept his troops up all night, expecting an attack near the San Jacinto River, uh, which is east of Houston. I've actually been there. Uh, he thought that the Texas settlers were going to attack him at night, so he kept his troops up all night. Well, the next morning came around, 
there had been no attack and so he and his troops started to relax and uh, some of them went to sleep. That was a problem because the very next afternoon, Sam Houston and his army attacked. Santa Ana's army was completely asleep. They were surrounded, forced to surrender and accept defeat. Uh, and Santa Ana was forced to sign a piece of paper giving Texas its independence and saying that he would take all of his troops back to Mexico. Uh, Santa Ana was none too pleased by this, and he always claimed that that piece of paper was not a legitimate piece of paper. And the government of Mexico claimed that Santa Ana didn't have a right to sign that piece of paper because while he was in Texas, he was removed as president of Mexico and replaced in Mexico City. Santa Ana was president of Mexico many, many times. There was all kinds of chaos going on in Mexico at the time. That's a completely different story. Um, if you're interested, you can look it up. It is very interesting. So how did Texas become part of the United States? Because Texas was fighting to become its own country. It was fighting to become an independent republic. And for 10 years, it actually was. From 1836 to 1846, Texas was actually an independent country. It was the Republic of Texas. It's also known as the Lone Star Republic because it's always, Texas is famous for having the single star on its flag. That's why they call it the Lone Star State. Uh, the United States was reluctant to annex Texas because, first of all, there was the slavery issue. Northerners opposed slavery. Southerners wanted it. If Texas was admitted as a state, it would most certainly be a slave state. And so the Northerners did not want that. There was also the issue of the fact that Mexico was a bit salty about losing the Texas independence struggle. And if the United States annexed Texas, there was the potential for war with Mexico. President Santa Ana even so much as said, if the United States annexes Texas, there will be war. So it was not theoretical. It was threatened by both sides. Uh, there was an election in 1844. James K. Polk faced off against William Clay. Uh, William Clay was very adamant that Texas not become a state um, because that would mean almost certain war with Mexico. James K. Polk was rather insistent that Texas become a state. Um, James K. Polk won the election. So in the period between the time James K. Polk was elected and became president, John Tyler, who was, it's not William Tyler, it should be John Tyler, I will change that. John Tyler signed the act of Congress making a Texas a state. I believe he signed that literally the day before James K. Polk became president. So when James K. Polk became president, Texas had been officially made a state 24 hours earlier. And this is actually a prelude to the next lesson the Mexican-American War. So stay tuned for that. Uh, right now, I would like you to write a summary, uh, as I always ask you to do. This should be a lengthy summary because there's a lot of information here. So instead of three to five sentences, this one should be five to eight sentences. Try to answer the following questions with your summary. Why was Texas important? What was the relationship between Mexico and the American settlers in Texas? Why did the Texans rebel against Mexico? What took place during the revolution? And how did Texas become a state? If your summary answers all of those questions, chances are you're going to have a good summary. And as always on the right, I have a nice little blurb there showing you what a good summary does and does not look like. So that's it for now, folks. This is, once again, Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.